sometimes it's worth stopping. Stopping and ignoring all of the the crummy news coming out and the 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 three hundred and thirtieth AI announcement of the day, but just to stop and marvel at how truly amazing some of the modern technology that we are getting in the computing world truly is. I mean, because some of it is just stellar. Some of it. It reinvigorates your faith that we can truly make not just useful and interesting pieces of software, but but technically marvelous software, it's software that makes you smile, that software that people might actually want to use. At case in point, you can now, and this isn't breaking news, but it's amazing, you can now play games built for x86 Windows on ARM Linux. And this is important with extremely good performance and compatibility. That is amazing to me. That is truly, truly remarkable. Uh, we're talking completely different processor architectures, wildly, utterly different operating systems with totally different operating system designs. And yet, thanks to a wide variety of software projects such as FEX, uh, Proton, and, and many others. Um, but FEX lets you emulate x86 software on ARM64, right? It's not only possible to do it, but it's pleasantly usable. Like it's something that's not just a, a proof of concept. It really works and it works well. In fact, the x86 Windows games running on ARM Linux works so well that Valve is using ARM Linux as the core of their upcoming Steam Frame headset computer. Where's the where's a picture? I got a picture of this here. Here, here it is. This is the Steam Frame. Uh, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, like hardware wise, it's like a, it's like a, a beefy uh, smartphone only as a as a headset, sort of like the, the Apple headset and everything else. But it's an arm based system running Linux. Now, uh, Valve Steam Deck, their handheld, that's an x86 an AMD, but, you know, it's an x86 class machine, a 64 bit x86 machine running Linux. And that was already exciting for how well that Linux machine that was x86 could run x86 Windows games, a Linux machine running Windows games at very high quality, very high reliability and, and performance and compatibility. And now they're taking that even further and saying, well, shoot, we don't even need to use the same CPU architecture. And so they're this new hand, this new headset that Valve is coming out with whether you want it or not is remarkable in that it's that they're they're banking on the fact that you can run x86 windows games well on arm linux it's amazing to me that is absolutely amazing to me and and ubuntu is kind of getting behind this as well ubuntu is now packaging steam x86 steam so x86 software running running for specifically for running x86 games, they are packaging Steam specifically for ARM machines running Ubuntu Linux. For real, uh, this is a, a, a very, very real thing. If you go to uh, snapcraft.io slash Steam, you can see the canonical Snap package. I'm not a huge fan of Snap. And honestly, Ubuntu and canonical kind of annoy me sometimes but I get why they're doing this. And you can select the, whether you want to grab their, their package for x86 or ARM Linux, and it has full ARM Linux support. And th that's amazing to me. It's just stellar. And they've been publishing some of their, their early test results of this. Um, and they're showing not only good performance, but really importantly, um, good compatibility with some of the most popular Windows games running on Steam on ARM Linux. Things like uh, Claire Obscure, Expedition 33, and others here. I've got a, a screenshot of some of these up here. Um, you know, it, it, some older games and some newer games, Marvel Cosmic Invasion, Counter-Strike 2, Cyberpunk 2077, Dota 2, all the other things, and they're all running great. They're all running fantastic. Now, admittedly, uh, Canonical and the Ubuntu team are using extremely beefy uh, <laughs> hardware 
<laughs> to, to test these arm based machines like they're they're not using like a, a little raspberry pi here right but but the fact is it's working really well and that's pretty amazing uh here's a here's an announcement here uh steam snap for arm 64 call for testing hi everyone we've been building an arm 64 version of the steam snap uh and gaming graphics package for the past few months and they're now ready for broader testing since the steam client for linux is currently only available for AMD 64 x86 right we've bundled AMD 64 steam along with fex in our arm 64 snap which is used to emulate AMD 64 for steam this should be treated like a beta test so you may encounter unexpected behavior and bugs and then here's how to here's how to install it and uh, from everything that I'm seeing it functions really really well i mean i've seen a, i've heard from a ton of people now who have been testing this and they're like hey this works <laughs> like yeah they have run into a few bugs and yeah they've run into a few pieces of software that don't work but most commercial windows games that are working on say the steam deck under linux are now working just fine like just fine on ARM64 Linux. Uh, uh, here's from the FEX GitHub page, if you haven't heard of FEX before. FEX allows you to run x86 applications on ARM64 Linux dev devices similar to QAMU user in Box64. It offers broad compatibility with both 32-bit and 64-bit binaries, and it can be used alongside Wine and Proton to play Windows games. Uh, it supports forwarding API calls to host systems, host system libraries like OpenGL or Vulkan to reduce emulation overhead. An experimental code cache helps minimize in-game stuttering as much as possible. Furthermore, a per-app configuration system allows tweaking performance per game, uh, for example, by skipping costly memory model emulation. We also provide a user-friendly FEX config GUI, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it's amazing how well all of it is working. And I think I think I, I mentioned this at the at the start, but in a time when we are inundated with a constant barrage of software changes, which none of us actually wanted, right? Things like, oh, you have you like Notepad.exe? Here's an AI system for Notepad.exe, or hey, here's AI inside of Microsoft Paint, or or on and on and on, uh, shoving AI into every nook and cranny we can possibly imagine, making every user interface look like every other user interface, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's it's it, it's it's tedious. It's not only is it not something that I want, it's not inspiring. I mean, yeah, you've taken an interesting, you know, cutting edge technology like AI, but then you just shoehorned it in somewhere. You didn't combine together fascinating bits of technology to make the world more amazing. You just shoehorn things in and it's annoying. So when I see things like this, it warms my heart. Man, it to see new and updated software bringing truly amazing and truly fun capabilities to the world of computing, that is amazing. I mean, look at that. ARM 64 devices running x86 Windows games. These are ARM Linux machines. It's amazing. Uh, it, it brings so many different things to mind. Uh, for one, it, it's, it's been joked about for quite some time that perhaps we are reaching a point where the common universal cross operating system, cross platform runtime really is Windows, like the Win32 API in Windows apps. And that's crazy and silly in a lot of ways. But with how mature Wine and Proton and now Fex and on and on have gotten, it kind of does make a certain amount of sense. Uh, you know, I, I, we can run in like Steam games on Linux, a lot of times perform better than they do on Windows, even though some of those are native Windows games running on Linux. Uh, we're seeing that over and over again. Uh, in fact, some older versions of Microsoft Office and other Windows apps actually run better on Linux under Wine than they do under Windows. And so we've, we've reached this point where maybe Windows and Win32 and the like are becoming a more common cross-platform standardized runtime environment, which is both awful and wonderful and weird and expected. And it, I have a lot of emotions around it. But the, the, ARM, the ARM Linux being able to run x86 Windows, the, the possibilities this opens up is truly phenomenal. 
I mean, truly, truly phenomenal. Uh, kudos to absolutely everyone who has worked on every piece of this functionality from FEX to Proton to Wine for years and on and on and on. This is, this is stellar stuff. This is really, really cool. Um, I Hopefully, we see more of these sorts of things uh, over the rest of 2026. Hopefully, we see more legitimately interesting and exciting things and less, hey, look, I just inserted a uh, AI chatbot into uh, Emacs, <laughs> right? Like, I just, we don't need to go down that road. Let's stick to the cool stuff. Uh, thank you to all the Lunduke Journal subscribers for allowing me to take a little detour into this little bit of awesome technical wizardry, this little bit of magic that's happening in the world right now, uh, making computing actually more interesting and better. Uh, go to Lunduke.com and pick the way you want to take part in the Lunduke Journal. We're on Substack and X and Rumble and YouTube and Locals and Patreon and Facebook. You can get download the MP4s on Itch if you're a subscriber. Uh, there's a podcast RSS feed, which all so many of you know about. Uh, and if you want to subscribe to the Lunduke Journal, become a paying subscriber uh, for the rest of the month of January. Uh, we ran this deal last month. It was so popular. We're bringing it back for January. It's $89 for a lifetime subscription or 50% off monthly or yearly subscriptions uh, to the Lunduke Journal, which comes with MP4 downloads, PDF eBooks. Uh, there's tons of PDF eBooks, um, forum access. By the way, all downloads from the Lunduke Journal are DRM free. So like you become a subscriber, you get MP access to the MP4 downloads. It's every show put out by the Lunduke Journal this year, in last year, 2025, and the year before that, 2024. So it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows. In fact, we're on track by the end of this year, it'll be roughly a thousand shows uh, that you'll be able to download. It's it's crazy. It's it's absolutely bonkers how many shows are up there and how many stories have been made possible because of of all of you supporting the work of the Lunduke Journal. Stories that just aren't getting told a lot of times throughout a lot of the tech press. Only possible because of you. You guys are truly fantastic. And if you become a lifetime subscriber, again, 89 bucks, you can get added to the lifetime wall of awesomeness. Uh, there's three of those walls right now and uh, we'll see how long before we have to add a fourth wall that's a it's, a it's not a bad problem to have really and with that ladies and gentlemen boys and girls nerds and nerdettes across the inner tubes i do declare end broadcast <laughs>